All right, how's it going, everybody? Doing the quick uh, Bifrost versus TT2 by Chord live stream impression. We will uh, be playing with this setup right here. It's going to be the uh, Bifrost 2 into the Fonitor XE, and then that's balanced with a single ended out. And then I'll be swapping over to the Chord TT2. Uh, using it single-ended. I'm using adapters because my I was lazy and I didn't grab my single-ended <laughs> cable for my ZMS. Um, so with that being said, hello everybody. Um, and uh, hey, Elric, Drifting Bunnies. Uh, yeah, I w it'd be really bad if I uh, blow up my Fonitor <laughs> Uh So if anybody doesn't know, there's a there's a small chance that if you don't properly um, uh, do the swapping of like cables uh, with the single ended especially it can kind of um, so I was going to do that I was going to run both through the Fonitor but then it was kind of a pain in the butt and it wasn't really fair because then it would be single ended for one of them and I didn't want to kind of have that be a factor like the single ended versus X um, versus balance so uh, I figured the, the DAC in both this way is kind of more on fair playing grounds. And I in, in my opinion, the amps, both amps, the Fonders and the Chord TT2s are close enough to where it shouldn't be too much of a factor in how it sounds. But once again, this is not scientific. This is just my personal impressions and feelings uh, between the two DACs or uh, even these setups even, right? The two setups because the Chord TT2 has been kind of disruptive for me in the sense that now I'm looking at um, potentially uh, uh, selling off the Fonitor XE as a potential no longer needed kind of thing. <laughs> hey, what's up, Martin? Um, and that's the reasoning behind the setup that I have currently, which is this, which will be the cord single-ended uh, Bifrost 2 balanced into the SPL Fonitor uh, single-ended. And I'm using cord, or cord, I'm using uh, <laughs> Cobuzz to do the test. So, um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't explode. I'll, I'll do my best to remember to, to pause and, and go from there. So starting off, I'm getting um, Signal in the Noise by Go Go Penguin. You can check it there. Uh, and I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, I also have both of these currently volume matched, uh, not scientific. I'm using a decibel meter, and I just put it in the, the cup, and I cover my hands. But it's at roughly about... Um, 75 with peaks into 76 uh, range for for these um, for both of these um, so just as a heads up uh, so that's what I'm kind of that's the volume range I'm, I'm, I'm listening at is about 75 peaks into the high 70s low 80s for both currently set up um, and I don't have crossfeed going for either of them on. Uh, I don't have, it's pretty much just the bare bones setups. Like there's no, I don't have any of the, the whiz bangs going, going on with either of the amps um, or the DAX. Well, the TT2 has pretty good crossfeed. All right, right into it. Signal in the noise, um, going. Um, also, I'm on the TT2 first. I'm on the, the TT2 right now. And you can kind of, you should be able to see it. Yeah, you should be able to see it. Uh, where is mirrored camera? Right there, uh, right there in the little thing. Um, man, drums, drums are fantastic with this. You get a lot of background detail, nice little, uh, all the little details in the background. Nice, nice, the piano playing in the background, the drums, the hi-hats, the brushes. It sounds like brushes. Um, uh, the kick drum. It's pretty good, pretty awesome little little sound coming out of this one. I figured this would be a good track to kind of test uh, detail and um, piano right there. The, the piano playing and then is really good for, I would assume, t for me, I like piano, so that'd be a good tonal balance check to comparison. Um, if you guys know of any like other tracks you'd want me to test the, these two on for detail or I might put on some Yoshi Horikawa um, uh, down here in the next couple tracks, but for the first one, signal and noise, go go penguin. I mean, we'll get in a couple, uh, like a minute or so, and maybe I'll find a good track where it's kind of 
complicated. Like right now, it's gotten a little bit complicated. Where in the sense we have multiple uh, instruments and tones, uh, or notes. Sorry, not tones, but notes from the piano. Um, all right, so let's pause, switch. You can kind of see the little black bar showed up. But I'm going to switch the the Bifrost to. I'm using Wasapi, but not in exclusive mode for uh, both of these for the test if that matters to anybody I'm not sure if it's a, a thing or not for anybody or if it's even a thing all right now we are on the ship by frost you should be able to see it now ship by frost 2 with the phonators and going So it seems like the piano's a little more forward. I'm not getting as much detail or separation. It's very minimal, but I'm it's I'm not picking up that the snap or the uh, percussion of the drums as as well with the Bifrost too. It's still there. It's still fantastic. I mean, it does it does seem a little more forward too. Like uh, the TT two, I feel like I was sitting in the front row, sitting down, like listening to like a a. a I don't know, open live venue, let's say. We'll just use that. Like a live venue, you're in the front row sitting down with the TT2. Um, and then with the Bifrost, it feels like I've stood up and I'm now up against the the stage kind of listening. So they're very they're both very close, but this one, the Bifrost definitely pushes more forward. And then it's it's warmer. I can already tell there's a warmth to it. But it's not like a massive difference. The the TT2 seemed like it was a little slightly cleaner. The tonal balance to me for the piano sounds like uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have two DAX here, Enric. They're 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 uh it's tough. It's a it's an open relationship right now. <laughs> um and then, uh, sorry, uh, tonal balance to me on the Bifrost, it seems a, like it's almost, it's a little warmer with the piano. Like it has a little more warmth to the tone and a little bit, it seems like a little bit of slower roll off. And I, and I know you can change the, 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 the different, um, roll offs and that kind of stuff. I think I have the TT2 set to slow right now. Um, or slow? No. I think it's fast. Sorry, fast. Um, so that might be a factor. I don't know if you can change really the Bifrost twos for that. Um, but yeah, so it seems like the piano is a little more warm sounding, whereas the TT two had it a little more clean sounding or less um, less warm. It, it, they both sound great. They both sound good. It's just it seems like there's more warmth to the tone of the piano with the Bifrost than with the TT2. So if that's the thing that you're interested in, I kind of personally prefer the tones of the TT2 piano, though, just slightly. And now we're getting a, a sounds like a stand-up bass with some slaps. Um, very warm, nice. The details there. The slaps don't seem very uh, like crisp. Like, I'm not picking those up. So let me go make sure I mark this here. So we're at uh, four thirty. So let's go back to four ten. Uh, nope, that's when the bass first kicked in. Let's go right at four minutes, and then we'll swap back to the TT two and see how that bass sounds with the TT two. All right. I guess I could show you like my swapping. I can try to do that next time. Um. Anyhow. Uh, back to the TT2. This is a little bit slow. I wish I had runes still, but I uh, did not stay with my rune subscription, so that would have made this a lot easier. So, things to note. Um, but anyways, right back into uh, this, and we're on the TT2 now. Yes, so uh, the TT2 has more detail, definitively more detail. <laughs> It sounds a little bit wider. It's also uh, cleaner sounding, a little and cleaner and a little bit brighter sounding, but not in a like a like bad way, but just cleaner, brighter sound. It's not as warm. It doesn't have like that that added warmth that the Bifrost has. And the 
I can hear the 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 the, the bass guitarists as they're strumming. I can actually hear the fingers, uh, if that makes sense. Like I can hear them, like even hitting the fingers tapping. On um, it's pretty cool. Like so, there's definitely a little more detail the the, the TT two. There's by a little. I mean, there's it's a little bit cleaner, a little more detail. Quantifiably, it's one of those things where it's tough to kind of. I mean, having them back to back, I can. It's a little bit easier. Um, but we're talking pretty minimal differences at the end of the day. It's more, but I would say that the, the TT2, just by this little amount of time, just going back and forth right now, the TT2 is more in line with my preference for the sound. Um, it's crisper, it's cleaner, um, it still has nice warmth where it needs to be warm, but it's not that kind of, uh, slight the Bifrost 2 has this a slight warmth across the, the board with it. That's pretty, it's nice. I really like it. And it's, they're, they're kind of on the staging side. It's interesting. Hey, Jeremy, how goes it, man? Uh, hopefully you feel better. Um, I also, I'm going to do something with your uh, tuba, your tuba here in a little bit. I wanted to, well, in a little bit, I wanted to do something. I want to try something unique with that one. We're, we're going to see how that pans out, but I'm going to try and get that done here soon. Um, uh, da, da, da. yeah, I'd love to do like a Gungner or a, a Yugi at some point. Uh, so if this just switched to, uh, Ro Rose Rouge, but let me switch to actually, I want to go to, uh, Yoshi Horikawa. You know, it's funny. My search bar still has baby metal from the last live stream I did. <laughs> I think that was you, Elnick. <laughs> I think that was I think that was you. <laughs> um, so let's go Yossi. Uh, let's see here. Do we want to do wandering or do we want to do bubbles? What do you guys think? Wandering or bubbles? Should be interesting either way. Uh, you know, I'm going to do wandering. So I like the way that it sounds when he's walking up the path. So let's do uh, wandering. I'm on the chord TT2. Um, hitting play now. Uh, coming up the side, gravel crunching, really good detail. Birds, you know, the music kind of, the little dunk. Wow, it's crisp. It's definitely crisp. Um, yeah, wandering. Uh, wow, the, the staging is really cool. It's really, it's really good. It has really good wide stage. And this is with the all-in-one uh, Core T2. So I'm using the amp with it. So it's, take that for what it is. Oof. The percussions and that, that, that bass. Oof. And the birds are just like. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Um, it's just crisp. And then the, the, it has really good tonal balance. I, I would say that it, it's, it's more in line with how I re recall those sounds from listening to live music, if that makes sense. Or as close to those sounds as I've heard. I've been to a bunch of symphonies and growing up, I had a, a bunch of, uh, I went to a bunch of live venues a lot when I was a kid. Um, yeah. So let's switch back over to the Bifrost and see how that goes. And then after this one, maybe we can, I'll, I'll discuss my thoughts on it to make it pretty easy. Uh, let's see here. So I don't have to be listening and we can chat. Um, here, you can see how I swap this out. Do a little pause, pop that bad boy off. All right. All right. Um, all right. Switched over. We're in Wasabi, Bifrost. We're good. I'm going to start from the beginning on this one again. And wandering, Yoshi Horikawa. Yeah, I can I can instantly tell that the the detail and the crunch like of the gravel like moving. I'm not getting as much detail in it. Like I'm not getting. It's still there. It's still it's it's fantastic, but it's it's. If I didn't hear the TT two, I would think these are really good. <laughs> you noticed that, huh? A little Easter egg. <laughs> I was wondering if you noticed that. I put that there on purpose to see if you'd notice. <laughs> um, sorry, Drifting Bunny's uh, his his Austin pin. Let's see here. He's talking about this. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it's warm. It's nice. The details, the bird, it's, the bird feels a little bit closer in actually. Because the TT2, it felt like it was more over here, and he and the the Bifrost, it seems more here. It's still wide, but it's definitely closer. And it's it, the and the the that the um I don't think it's a what is that bass? It sounds like one of those um like rhythm drum basses, you know, like a big stand-up barrel bass. That's what it sounds like, like Japanese style, like the boom, 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 boom. And uh, it sounds a little more, um, that bass isn't as clean sounding with the, the Bifrost 2. The TT2 still has that impact, but it has a more crispness to it. It sounds more accurate. It doesn't sound as, uh, blood is the wrong word, but it's kind of going that route. Um and then the back and forth, yeah, I would say that the Bifrost 2 is a little bit closer in, but it's still very wide. But it, I think the TT2 definitely beats it. All right, so I wanted to answer a couple questions and go dive into, so hopefully I wasn't talking super loud. <laughs> Just then it's tough with close back listening. Yeah, it's a fun experience. Uh, Ellen, Rick, well, I did it this way because um, I didn't want to mess up the, well, I wanted it to be as, as fair as possible, as fair as this could possibly be in the first place, because that's not scientific. I'm not properly volume matching as uh, accurately. I'm using single ended, and I, I don't know. It's not the most accurate. But the reason I did it was because I wanted to be able to use the Bifrost 2 uh, balanced into the Fonitor and then single ended out, because I feel that that's a more fair uh, comparison in the sense that. Um, the the chord I believe has more of that balanced nature. It can be balanced out as well, but it, it, they both have the good single ended, and so I figured that was the best uh, kind of compromise for that. Uh, and then yeah, like that was my, my I would I would I wanted to do that, but I to do the AB to do the AB swapping into the same one, but I didn't want to have that was the biggest reason though, because I wanted to have it both be on the kind of fair grounds. I didn't want. Um, the the a single ended to uh it being single ended versus xlr whereas this it seems it's more fair in my opinion not that that's scientific also i didn't really check the stats or statistics for that but this is what it is um so that's the reason why now i wanted to kind of talk about uh the difference between why i'm doing this also a bunch of people ask because i did recently get the cord tt2 i have the bifrost i have the fauna xc um, and now I'm kind of on the, on, I'm kind of going on a fire sale a little bit, or I'm going to be doing a fire sale of getting rid of some stuff. And, and cause I feel that the TT2 does what does is better in the DAC realm than a lot of my DACs I currently have. I also have the, uh, the RME ADI2 DAC, uh, which I actually find that the Bifrost is better than that one uh, as a DAC standalone, uh, where the RME comes in as a kind of a winning combination. Is that just that it has the combination of all the different parts coming into one makes it a better all-in-one or a better uh, use case proposition. Um, am I booting the Bifrost 2, uh, Drifting Bunnies? I don't think so. I really like the Bifrost 2, and I think that it's it will be a good DAC to have for the long term, because it is. It's a fantastic DAC, and, and it's price performance wise, it's hard to beat. Like, I don't, I, I've, I mean, it's, it's beaten everything so far I've thrown that I've had and played with except for um uh sorry the reason the comments uh, uh except for the t the core tt2 i do think the tt2 is more in line with what i like as a pure dac and then the other factor is is i, I really like so you can kind of see my desk is a little bit um crowded right now because i have the monitor and the bifrost here and i actually have the two the kind of see it back there is Donatello's legs and he's standing on the the Hagerman tuba there but uh with the Fonitor it was taking up so much room that I it just made it tough uh to have that on the desk along with everything else and with the t when I got the core TT2 from Jeremy who uh, hopefully if he's still in uh Jeremy thank you so much for letting me uh demo that actually not really because you cost me a lot of money which in my wallet because I went then within two days went out and bought a TT2 or ordered a TT2 um so, but with the TT2, I felt that it, it basically did better in the DAC realm uh, than the Bifrost. 
and then as the in the amp realm it was on par if not slightly better in a, different areas as the Fonitor. and I felt that as a co all in one combo it did basically more than what the Fonitor and Bifrost were doing as a as a combo if that makes sense and so and it's tiny I mean oh, let me switch back again so you can see I mean it's this is the all in one unit versus the Fonitor and the Bifrost and it's just a massive hunk of gear and they're both fantastic um and i think that's where the kind of it's unfair comparison to some levels because this this comes or i'm pointing i need to stop switching <laughs> um this comes in at i think msrp is like fifty six hundred dollars um the fonitor comes in at just over two thousand dollars depending on if you get the dac or not and then the bifrost comes in at around six hundred dollars roughly so the you have to kind of apples to oranges this because it's not really a fair comparison and that's if you're it's fair in the sense that it's a DAC and an amp and all that kind of fun stuff but uh, uh, definitely the the cord is a ridiculously expensive all-in-one setup um, is it worth it to you that's going to be totally up to you uh, if you fit your budget that kind of thing and the reason I went with it personally was because if you look at the, all the different components together, plus like if the upgrade, if I were, it's it's on the same, almost the same pricing points as what the Fonitor and the Bifrost, just a couple gram more. <laughs> so you're getting the form factor, use case, smaller footprint, um, and that being said, so it's it really comes down to what's worth it to you versus what's in your budget. If you can, if that fits into your budget, then go that route. And I will say this: the Bifrost too with the S. BL Finder XE or X or even the E because they're all the same, just different uh, varying levels of like what what they do. So the XE has the the headphone out on the back. The X has the preamps out for speakers on the back, um, and then the uh, E is basically uh, pared down just to ju just the cr little little bit of crossfeed with the the whole uh, 120 volt rail system uh, amp. So it's basically the same amp, just without a lot of the features that the other two have for the SPLE Fonter E, um, and it's much smaller. It's like a thinner uh, little little jam. Uh, anyhow, um, so it really comes down to if it's worth it to you. I would say that personally, the Hugo two the Cord Hugo TT two does, in my opinion, beat the Bifrost two, but that's should be a given at the price points. That, I mean, you're you're looking at components and that kind of stuff, um, implementation and all that other jazz um but i will say this also the the tt2 into the fonitor is actually really great like it, it there's some there's a bit of magic there and i can't quite put my finger on what it is that it makes it sound actually almost i slightly prefer the tt2 into the fonitor um over just the all-in-one tt2 so that was that, that was where that um i was saying there's some places it doesn't beat it and that was one of them is there, there's something there i think it's the the fact that the, the spl is so clean like the background is so so um dark or so black like you're, you're not going to pick up a lot of the it, it separates well there's just some bit of magic there uh for that um that combo uh, but then again that's just the fauna the fauna is just a fantastic standard a solid state and really sets a good standard for me personally um yeah and then so josh uh vincent with the tt2 being a bit more analytical could you see it ever being fatiguing um even with less warm headphones. So right now these, the, I know it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, the VC is actually kind of bright. It, I know it's, it has the ZMF warmth, but it actually has a pretty good brightness to it. Uh, and that's why I was using this and I was going to use my H800s, but then I didn't want the mic picking up <laughs> the music. So, cause those bleed <laughs> music. Um, and I, I have yet to be fatigued by the TT2. And I've and that's been my main listening um, source for a while. And actually, my current main rig is the TT2 feeding into the ECP T4, which you can see. It's, well, kind of see. It's right, it's down here. Um, there you, go. you can, if you can read that. <laughs> the T4 headphone amplifier. Um, so that's the ECP T4, which is a, it's a tube hybrid. And uh, that's the one that's my main listening amp that I use from the TT2 into that. That's the main thing I'm listening to on an average daily basis. 
Uh, and when I want uh, solid state, I'll, I'll just listen straight off the TT2. But when I'm not doing, when I wasn't just listening to the TT2 just to kind of figure out if I liked it or what have you, I was just purely listening off of the uh, solid state uh, single ended outs from the, the chord. Uh, so yeah, if there's any other questions, I think that was kind of the, I just want to do a quick rundown of my thoughts between the two and give you kind of impressions on those. Uh, so the breakdown right now is, is that the chord to my ears is more clean. It has a uh, better detail retrieval, uh, bigger stage. Um, the Bifrost is right there in the terms of, of detail it's not it's a little bit not it, you're missing out on some some de you're missing out on some detail i'm trying not to be too crazy with the descriptions but uh, it's it's kind of hard to quantify a little bit but it's the difference would be like looking at a auto focused picture versus a uh, manually focused in on a picture where there might just be a little bit of blur on the autofocus one where you're not quite getting exactly what you're looking for out of it if you're a photographer kind of thought process whereas the tt2 is like laser focused in on it um and and you know perfectly focused on the item um then the other thing that's kind of interesting is the TT2 actually has a lot of other features too. It has Bluetooth module. It has uh, really good, actually the TT2, the other thing it has, in my opinion, I was playing with them back and forth. The crossfeed on the TT2 is better, in my opinion, than the crossfeed on the Fonitor XE. The difference is, is the Fonitor's is analog and the TT2's is, I believe, digital. Um, for whatever reason, that does help uh, with the, for my ears. I prefer the Chords um, crossfeed. Uh, let's see here. What else? If there's any other questions, I'm trying to think if there's anything worth, <laughs> worth kind of diving into this any further than that. Uh, oh, price points, because this is really an unfair battle if you really want to dive into it in the sense that, you know, you're dealing with the shit Bifrost 2 being a $600 DAC um, versus like the Cord TT2 if you're looking at it as purely as a DAC, which I think is a disservice. I think the Cord TT2 is really an all-in-one that's kind of getting a lot of your stuff off your shelf or it's kind of combining a lot of things into one. And then I hear great things about the M scaler. So I'm hoping to get an M scaler in for a demo eventually. Uh, and when I do, I'll do a quick rundown of what the differences are with that as well. Um, hopefully you guys aren't picking up my phone because apparently it's going nuts right now. Um, so the, the Bifrost 2 though, honestly is probably the best stack I've heard outside of the TT2 so far. Um, I know that, especially for the price, we're talking like $600 DAC, that's, that, I mean, it, it's ridiculous how good it is um, for the price, especially. The, uh, the yeah, Elric, the, if you go MSRP on the TT2, uh, Elric, it's 5,600, I believe. Um, I highly recommend you reach out to any dealer or buy used because you can get a little, it, it, you can get it exponentially cheaper if you, you know, ask nicely or find one used or like I said, ask a dealer if they have any deals or what have you. Um, so there is that. Um, yes, the, the cord is expensive. <laughs> so it's definitely not for everybody. I think if it's in one your means, I definitely recommend at least trying it if you can find an audio shop that has them. I know a lot of the higher end stereo uh, speaker shops too uh, in different cities will have them on occasion. Um, just reach out and see if they have them uh, and see if about getting a demo. Um, because they, it's it's worth trying listening to. It's a good, it's a interesting. I I wasn't I was really hoping I didn't like it to be honest with you when I first got it in, and I mean, I'm sure the SRAF folks can even <laughs> attest to this. Where I was just like, why, why do I like this? This is horrible. This is bad for me. Um, and so then yeah, that's gonna uh, preempted a a eventual sale of a bunch of my other stuff. Uh, that once again back to the Bifrost though. I do think that that as far as the the every every person. Or normal a normal audiophile person, the Bifrost would is perfectly great for everything you'd want. Um, 
and even like the if you want to step up even from that the 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 I here is fantastic. I haven't heard of Yggdrasil in a while though, so I can't really talk on that. And I think the Yggdrasil is actually a little bit more in line with what the TT2 does, um, in the sense of uh, it's I think it's cleaner and more of a brighter sound and less warmth to it from what other people have told me, and from my recollection. But I uh, I don't want to really speak on it because it's been a long time since I've heard the Yggdrasil. Um, what other one would be that from listening time frames that i've heard in a while most it's been a while recently because obviously covid but uh yeah i would say oh the the dave i did hear the dave the chord dave um a little a couple weeks ago or i've, I've heard the dave and anyways the Dave between the dave and the tt2 you're uh i think one of my friends kind of nailed it it's the dave is kind of it's a different signature one um but two the dave has probably I don't know, I'd say the TT2 is like a 90%, especially with the M scaler, um, from what they're saying is the M scaler and TT2 is about 90% of what a Dave would be. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. The Dave's ridiculously expensive over even the TT2. So uh, at the oh, so Kevin B, at what level of source amp and headphone do you think the high-end DAC differences become negligible? Honestly, I would even say the, the even at the Bifrost level, they're they're pretty. You're pretty pushing into the the just getting a different flavor, or even a little slight percentages differences. Um, but probably the Yggdrasil would probably be what I would say Yggdrasil, or uh, would be where it's really starting to get that anything in that that below anything above a thousand dollars is when you're starting to really get that negligible differences, in my opinion, personally. Um, I mean, I could be if if I didn't have the TT two right here right now, I'd be completely content with the Bifrost, and that's what more of what my takeaway from this is is it's like that whole once unheard or if it's within your budget or not within your budget that kind of thing. I think that the Bifrost is perfectly capable of making ninety nine percent of the people <laughs> happy with what they got, and then you throw in the like a Yggdrasil or something like that, and and or something like uh, I'm trying to think of the other one like a Socris or even some of those that are in that higher tier same range is the the Brazil, for instance uh, I, I think that's where it's negligible really and you're just changing the flavor or you're getting maybe certain give or takes between the different DACs or implementations um, so there's that so that would be my answer to that probably anything over honestly anything over the Bifrost too anything above that you're just more or less it's becoming that chase for that last 5 to 10 percent depending on who you are and what your capabilities are at listening to it uh, and also even even higher than that you start pushing you're chasing at that point there's also the aesthetic chase too i think there's some of that too like you you're chasing how it will look on your desk and that kind of stuff blah 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 um or as drac would say blah 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 um but that's that would be where it it's you're chasing at that point anything above the me personally anything ab above the bifrost too you're chasing or even above the drill definitively you're chasing in that price sorry when i'm saying Yggdrasil, i'm saying that price bracket um, of like a thousand to sixteen, fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred, fifteen thousand. Oof, ugh, that's scary. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's where I would would put those. Um, so yeah, I think with that, uh, I would say for most people, the Bifrost or um, it, I wouldn't say it lost by any way, shape, or form in the in the, in the grand scheme of things because it's still a fantastic deck that does really well me personally i do prefer the tt2 um and it's you're paying for it though I mean, that's the thing you're paying for i think you're paying a cord tax also because i think that with the the way that they design the aluminum blocks and like the it's a premium audio, audio piece of kit so you're paying the cord tax like anything right you're paying for that premium the name the premium uh, build quality that kind of stuff um and the, the materials used inside so that's i think that's where a lot of the pricing gets crazy uh so yeah that with that i think most people would be content with with the bifrost uh and if there's any other questions i think i can end it with that i think I just wanted a quick stream about about these these two real quick and what i was hearing differently uh unless there's another track or something like that you guys want me to listen to one more time or or another track to maybe see what i hear the differences on um let's see yeah so a TT2 without an amp isn't worth it. Honestly, I would actually prefer, if, if I could have had the TT2s, like I was really hoping that the cutest 
would have been the TT2 DAC, but it's not. But if you could create a TT2 DAC just by itself standalone and like cut the price in like half, if not that, if not maybe more, I don't know how that would play. Probably wouldn't do that. They'd probably cut it in half. Um, and probably even charge a premium up, up premium that too. But uh, I would say yes. If I could have just the TT2's DAC, I'd probably be very content with that. Um, the amp, I do think that the amp is really good, but I I I would say I prefer the Fonitor more by like a small amount over the 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 TT2's amp, but it's minimal. <laughs> Listen to baby metal. Uh, okay, let's see here and. Bones by Periphery. Okay, so we'll do, we'll, we'll end on Baby Metal. How about that? But we'll listen to it just because it's chaos. Um, and it's, that might, hopefully that doesn't become a thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alex, sorry, man. Yeah, that's, I, I need to get better at scheduling these. I was last minute, I've been, uh, as, as SRAF would say, I was family man in it. And I kind of decided last minute to, to, to do this. Um, and I'm also messing with my new, like a new setup right now so uh like i have a new i have lights everywhere i'm trying to get figure out lighting i'm also trying to figure out the two camera setup so i'm that was i've been that plus the other craziness that's happening in the world today or in the world this week i yeah <laughs> uh damn it no, like, <laughs> so let's go look at uh bowens by periphery one second uh excuse the tappy taps Let's see here, Bones by Periphery. Is that even on? There's Periphery. Garden in the Bones, is that it? Is it Garden in the Bones? I think it's Garden in the Bones. Let's say Garden in the Bones. There's two versions here. I'm gonna pick the first one and hope. Let's see what the, Let's see which one has a higher, nope. Okay, we'll go Garden in the Bones. And this is on the Bifrost, two with the Fonitor currently. I like the detail. You can hear like the, uh, the guitar in the back a little bit and the vo vocals come in. Uh, like I was saying before, like the, it feels like you're, it's a little more closer to me uh, or sorry, there's a little more presence. Like you're standing a little bit closer to the stage. It's really cool because the, uh, there's like the, what is that sound? It's like, is it like an electric? I oh, don't there's like a weird like, dun, 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 dun. and it's, that seems like it's like coming in the middle of my head, that sound, but then everything else is kind of more traditional sounding. Oh, geez. <laughs> What's up, Taryn and Voodoo? All right. The vocals are fine. I'm not getting, it definitely has that warmth to it. All right. I'm gonna pause, go back to the beginning, switch out. Let's see here. Pause, pause, make sure I'm not blowing up my monitor. <laughs> I have a bunch of meme music to listen to apparently. Uh, let's see here, Wasabi, TT2, and Bones. Oh, so the TT2 instantly, the, 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 the drums and even the guitar, it has a, crisper sound to it. It has a, it's much cleaner and way more de I'm getting better detail. His voice is, sounds more natural, less shouty. It's just a cleaner sound. It sounds, it's more natural sounding, if that makes sense to what I recall, like a live music listening. Yeah. And then the, the, the drums in the background, like they're, you can, they're the, you can hear more, the presence is better, like the detail. And it's definitely wider. And then that, I'm trying to think that noise. The noise, it seems like a little bit pushed out and it's his, uh, the vocals are more coming at me more realistically. Whereas the, the with the, the Bifrost and the uh, Fonder, God, it's harder to, to describe, but the, it seems like it's coming at me more naturally. Like the, the, the sound is coming at me more naturally with far as stage. All right. I'm going to start with the uh, chord TT2 and then we'll do. <laughs> I 
I'm scared of baby metal. I'm actually scared. Let's go with Disco Zombie, even though that, that one, that one's the, uh, if you guys didn't know, the Disco Zombie was from the Halloween show we did. I did with Taryn, and we, we were discussing, like, tracks that reminded us of, of scary stuff, or, like, scary tracks, kind of thing. Uh, I wonder if that's even on. This will be interesting. Uh, Carpenter. Yeah, there you go. Carpenter Brutes here. So let's see if this is. Disco Zombie Italia is right there. Wow. Interesting. Okay. TT2. Disco Zombie Italia. That's kind of. That's intense, Taryn. That's kind of cool because it has like the. It's like. It's boop, 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 boop. It kind of like coming in and out. Like it has this. It, it definitely reminds me of like, like a cheesy '80s like horror or like the Mob Squad, like the Mod Squad, like the uh, the the Monster Squad. Sorry. And then it kind of reminds me of like a Michael Jackson thriller. So the electronic is really crisp, and I'm picking up like it's it's. It's just fast. It reminds me of being in like a in a club, like the, as far as like the the sound signature or like the presence. All right, that was that's pretty fun. I will switch to the wonderful Bifrost two and the uh, Bifrost two and the Foniter. Say that ten times fast. Whew. All right, Disco Zombie Italia. Carpenter Brut, Bifrost, Fonder. Oh yeah, instantly I can read the the back and forth is quieter. It's that's weird. I mean, it's, it's as it comes in, but it's still like the detail is man, it's crazy. Like there's the speed and detail is just different. It's not it's not quite. It still sounds great, but it's like once heard, it can't be unheard. Like the 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 difference between the detail and like the the little things in the background. It, it sucks to say it this way, but it almost sounds muddy when I know that the Bifrost is not muddy. It's just like, it's that I guess that would be like the comparison to make, I guess, in the sense that it's, and it's so not accurate because this is not a muddy sounding DAC at all. But it, the, when you're comparing versus TT2 on some of these things, it's just, TT2 is just crisp and clean and lots of detail. It's definitely warmer though. The Bifrost definitely has this warmth to it and like it's an easy listening DAC for sure. Uh, so pausing that and then going into um, <laughs> Alex, yeah, I'm I'm doing good. It's a it's a week in the in the states here, as everyone knows. Um, health health wise, all good uh, and all that fun stuff. Hope everyone else is doing good and healthy. Um, hopefully, and everyone, uh, hopefully, uh, if, if you're into the. The prayer thing and all that fun stuff. Uh, Jeremy, hopefully he's feeling better. He's he's always hit, hit or miss, and hopefully he's feeling better and he gets better soon. Um, and so Jeremy's the guy that that lent me his TT two, and the reason I have a TT two now. So thank you, Jeremy, <laughs> or not. Tell me now, you want to look at that? Um, let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. I'm saving baby metal for the last. I'll do a couple more tracks as we're pushing into forty minutes already. Uh, Tin Pan Alley. I'll do Tim Pan Alley, Tech Noir by Gunship, and then I'll do Baby, Baby Metal. Ugh, Baby Metal. Okay, Tim Pan Alley, Bifrost 2, Fonitor. That's just, it sounds so good. I actually grew up listening to, to blues and, and jazz, so. It sounds really good. Like the details seems seems to be there. It's you know it's it's, it's like a like a fresh listening straight from the 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 Bifrost and the Fonder first. This sounds right. That sounds good. And the details good. You can hear the ch ch ch, ch you know, and then the the the, the smack on the side of the drum, and the guitar is sounds excellent. And you can kind of hear some little details in the background where like when he he kind of. Click, like kind of you know slides the guitar like do 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 and then like kind of pulls off. There's that sound like the almost like a clunk. Um, 
Yeah, great, great sound. Okay, and then the the back. I really love the. It's actually a little bit closer in my head though. Like it feels like it's more like this, like a horse with blinders on kind of staging for whatever reason with this one. And then it seems like that snap, like the the him the drummer's clapping or smacking the side of the drum. It sounds more like in the middle of my head, which is weird. Um, all right. Oh yeah, so I, so uh, if everyone doesn't know my chain currently, I'm using Cobuzz. When you can keep, you can kind of see in my this mirror. Where's my, sorry, my camera's mirrored, so it's being a pain. Uh, right here, you'll see that I'm what I'm listening to, and I'm using Cobuzz. Um, and all I did was use OBS, and I just made a new window and made it so you can see what I'm listening to. <laughs> so yeah, Cobuzz, and I'm using um, uh, I'm on Cobuzz. I don't know if it makes a difference, but Cobuzz Studio. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I love my VCs as well. <laughs> they're, they're my they're my babies. Um, all right, so switching to the TT2 for Tin Pan Alley. And I need to learn, I need to get better at doing the little switch so you can see me unplugging and plugging if that's something you care about. Uh, so TT2, starting this back over. Oh man, the the rolling drum, more way more detail. Oh, and the guitar sounds, it's more presence. There's more presence. The tone is a little more lasting, if that makes sense. Uh, God, the detail is crazy with the like. Switch me's like strumming. Oh, and then the drums in the background, they're they're pushed more for like more behind sounding like instead of being like right here with the sh the bifrost and the fonder it feels like it's more like uh, uh, more not completely like out here but like it's m pushed out further um but yeah and the, and the guitar is fantastic this and see that's the thing like i i used to go to a lot of venues of blues live blues and my and and listening to my stepmom playing blues bands and orchestras and jazz and rock bands and all that fun stuff and so this sounds like what I remember them playing blues or jazz or whatever. So that might be also why I prefer this to the Bifrost as well. So it's a, my experiences in life led me to preferring that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I really like this. Um, so I'm going to leave it on TT2. Going to do one more track before the evil of baby metal. And then we'll let you guys get going. Uh, see so your tech noir gunship. There we go. And so TT two tech noir gunship. Reminds me of uh... hmm. the vocals are good. And the the bird, there's like a seagull that was cool. You can hear it like kind of out here in the distance, and you can hear it and still kind of. Yeah. It's cool because his voice, you can hear like the, the, the pops of like the them talking, you know. The drums are great. And then the little t -t 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 -t. <laughs> Reminds me of 80s dystopian future music. Cyberpunk. Her voice is excellent. Yeah, this sounds. Her voice like has that nice like female vocal, like kind of warmth, but it's like like kind of a warmer female vocal. It's good. I like it a lot. It's real smooth. All right, so I'm gonna move this to right before she starts singing, or yeah, right about there, and then we will switch this to. 
<laughs> let's play with this. And then there we go, boom. It swapped. I don't know if you know, this is my little ZMF Easter egg too. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Bifrost 2, 400X E, uh, Tech Noir Gunship. Oh, did I not switch? I didn't switch. Oopsies. Now it's switched. And now we're, okay, now we're going. Uh, it's pulled back. It's not as, uh, pre the presence isn't as, as, as good. And I'm not getting the detail. Like the, 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 Ta -ta -ta, and the drums aren't as the detail isn't quite as crisp and in, in there as the TT2. Still fantastic though. Honestly, her voice sounds a little bit better on the Bifrost 2 to my ears. It just it has like a nice warmth to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, the ZMF, uh, Kevin, is, yeah, this is a, a, it's not the stock cable. Um, this is these, the, their, their four strand Verite silver cable. It's, uh, it was a present to myself when I got these to match because I have the little, uh, code right there it is. ZMF purple split for my love of the purple. Um, so it was a, yeah, net candy present for myself. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so I think, I go, oh, I have to do babe metal out, don't I? Oh. Okay, baby metal. Uh, baby metal. Are we doing uh, Gimme Chocolate again? That seems like that was an interesting one. Or should I change it to kat Katsuki? Or Da Da Dance? Megatsune? Um, I'm going to go Gimme Chocolate because that's what I did last time. Oh, God. And so, Shit by Frost 2, Fonder, XE. It's like being on a roller coaster. Like, I know it's coming, and then it hits. <laughs> um honestly like it's it's keeping up it's the speeds there the detail seems to be there it does have like this slightly pulled back sound which is weird because i felt like the in the beginning the first track i was listening to it felt like some of the jazz was actually more forward than the tt2 which is interesting um Vocals are fine, not not high or anything. Just fast. It's just a fast track. It's crazy. Then the vo the singing is actually pretty nice. It's it kind of has a. I think the Bifrost two has a little more warmth. I'm actually that'd be interesting. This might be a little bit much with the TT two. We'll see. I'm gonna cut it back a little bit, and then we'll switch to the TT two for some baby metal, and and then I'm going to. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Swapping out. Mm, boom 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 I feel like any one of those little uh, 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 club horn things <laughs> uh, personally uh, Kevin if it's within your budget I actually do prefer the Chord TT2 over um, so I do prefer the Chord TT2 over this combo as a all in one um, but I think that it really comes down to your budget, your, um, is it within your means? Is it, you know, I, I, I'm a big advocate of that. Like if it's, if you're having to, to, you know, really scrape and, and pull it, pull something together to make it work, then, uh, I would definitely maybe save up some more or what have you. And, but I wouldn't, yeah, don't go out of your way to go into like dead or anything like that for one of those things. Um, I think that the Bifrost too is the easily, capable to to do those things and and be perfectly content with um but i do think there is a step up going to something like the cord um but there's a lot of other dax and amps um that are below that price point that i think will 
be competitive even more too. I, I just have to, off the top of my head, I can't think of them. I think there's some hollow audio ones that are, get a lot of love. There's some uh, Socrus stacks that get a lot of love. It just comes down to what your, what your flavor is that you're looking for. But I do, I do like the, so far of all the ones I've listened to, I've listened to some Socrus. I've listened to the, the, a lot of the hollow audio stuff. Um, I actually was a big fan of the Cyan uh, from Hall Audio, um, but they know they have the the, um, the bigger ones that are pretty good. But at the same time, I think that the Yggdrasil is even um, kind of push. You're pushing, I think, a good point to stop at would probably be Yggdrasil. And then, Elnrick, I think you have a uh, the, the Yiggy as well. Um, but, like, I think that those that's a good point to stop at too would be Yggdrasil as well but I mean if it, if you like the chord and you like the look of it um, it's got call it marbles um, the marbles and all that fun stuff it also has a really cool you can't really quite see it but up here there's a, a glass maybe I'll do uh, excuse the motion sickness uh, but there's like a glass um, top that you can actually see the inside I have this on manual but you can see the inside of the chips um, chips, the, the, the PCB board and that kind of fun stuff has a bunch of LEDs and they change with the, depending on what you're looking at, uh, or what you're listening to, it will change the color. Um, hopefully I can just completely make that go crazy. Um, and so aesthetically, I really like it. Um, so I think there's, I'm a big, I think a lot of times you're paying for the art of something too, like the, and the build quality and that kind of stuff. And so the cord tax is definitely high on this. Uh, but it's, it's good. I really like it a lot. Uh, to me, it is worth it. Sorry. Uh, I'm also delaying because I don't want to listen to baby metal right now. Um, <laughs> still answering questions. Um, and I'll answer the last question. I'll, I'll, I'll do my penance of baby metal. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that is definitely more presence. And it is. There is so much detail and speed. Holy smokes. Like everything is just... I can tell where everything's at. The stage is wider. It's fast and it's nuts. And you're getting all these little details that are like, like the the little electronic details even, like the and then like the drums and the oh man. And it's it's crazy because it's wide. I'm getting the drums and the, the guitars over here. Actually, it's not that bad for the vocals. I'm probably talking really loud right now because this is intense. Um, oh. And then when they start singing, it's actually not so bad. It's just there's so much going on that it's hard to concentrate. Um, but there's a lot going on. It's actually not like I'm. It's a way more detail though. You're picking up everything, but it's at the end of the day, it's not too bad as far as like like I'm not getting any, like any sibilance. I'm not getting any like shoutiness out of it. Like I wouldn't probably want to listen to this for a long time, but I but like just preference wise, but I think I, I wouldn't have a problem listening to this for a long time as far as like, um, uh, sibilance or brightness or that, it, it, like not fun kind of thing. So, all right, let me, okay. <laughs> so, uh, we'll do the last little bit here cause we're pushed into an hour. Um, any difference between the OFC cable and your silver cable? I haven't really noticed them. I never really did a, like an AB between them, but I'm not really a big believer in, in headphone cables making a big difference. Uh, I think of them literally as neck candy. And it's, so I think, and, and then it's, this feels really good. Like it's just, it, it, it doesn't have any jankiness to it. It it rolls in your hand, has a smoothness to it. That's really nice. You can roll it through your fingers really easy. It's, it's really a nice cable. Um, I know that some people think there's, there could be a difference and there maybe there is. I don't, I haven't really heard a massive difference between like a silver versus copper or that kind of thing. Uh, so I know that silver is supposed to be brighter. Um, but I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, if it, if it is, if there is a difference, it's so minimal that it, at the end of the day, I wouldn't be able to probably, you're talking less than 1% difference between them. I'm assuming from my experience anyways, if there is, if there is something, it's not like a speaker cable where you're over longer runs or that kind of thing. From my understanding, I'm not, I'm not a big speaker guy, so I can't really even speak on that. So <laughs> speak on speakers. <laughs> Sorry. That was stupid. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that cable is very minimal if, if at all. Um, 
yeah. So yeah, and actually, Kevin, for the TT two uh, regarding that, like, yeah, I'm I'm selling off a bunch of my stuff to basically be able to it, to re replenish my coffers. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, uh, DJ. Yeah. So I mean, I think with cables, there, it, I'm sure there might be some differences. I just think that at the end of the day, they're so minimal that it isn't worth the chase for the cost. Because a lot of times, cables are more expensive than some headphones sometimes, which is some to me is a little bit crazy. Um, I think there's a there's a point where I think it, that, that you're spending money on things to get differences, right? So I think anything below outside of like the Bifrost 2, mind you, but like a lot of like the low level gear, especially when you're looking at headphones, that kind of stuff, as you scale up, the details become more um, noticeable. So like with like a Utopia or a Stelia or even like the VCs or Verite Opens or, or the Atour um, from ZMF. Uh, to HD 800, um, that's when you're going to start seeing, seeing, you're going to start hearing the slight differences between the DAX and your amps, specifically like a tube amp. I know some, I know solid states is kind of controversial. They all sound the same, um, but I've found that the, the that they don't really. Um, in the in the sense of like some will have uh, blacker backgrounds, some will have better separation, some will have better staging. Um, but yeah, in general, the the actual like there's no real like. You, there shouldn't be any euphonics or anything like that, but the, the tech behind it will have differences there, if that makes sense. In my opinion, this is also my experience. Opinion is that some some solid states will also be slightly warmer, um, and then some will be more bright, and some you know. So there's there's different flavors to them, but they're they're most solid states will in general perform the same. They're giving you power to listen to your headphones, um, but there will be some slight signatures or or techn technical abilities that some will have better than others in my my experience and opinion um obviously go out and try it for yourself if you can uh so yeah i think that with that being said um between the tt2 and the bifrost 2 both win in my opinion because i'll probably keep both um it's i'm still on the in the air about my fonder uh depends on if i can get some repairs done on it because i have that case of the uh writing kind of coming off and so i'd like to get that repaired before i were was to sell it and also my left vu meter the led is flicking so if i can get that repaired i might put that up for for sale uh, if not i might say screw it keep it and maybe do some custom stuff to it maybe potentially if i'm brave we'll see um anyhow uh yeah so the tt2 by frost 2 both are fantastic i think you'd be very happy with either um within your budget I think I prefer the TT2, but I think with the Bifrost 2, it's easily one of the best DACs you can get on the market today, easily, um, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, uh, that being said, I will leave off and let you guys have the rest of your afternoon. And uh, links below for uh, all the different stuff I was messing with, more or less. Oh, I didn't link CMF, so I'll add that later. Why would I not do that? Listen to CMFs. Ah. I always do that. Um, last minute stream. That's what I get for that. Also, uh, links to like the headphone forum if you want to chat with us there. Uh, a lot of us that are in the chat here chat on there all the time. Um, uh, my Instagram. I'm also going to try and do my best to start using Twitter to announce that I'm doing these streams too. I'm not a big Twitter user, so I might just be doing that for just literally announcing. So if you're on Twitter, I might that might be a thing. I'm not real big on Twitter outside of probably doing the announcements. And uh, yeah. Um, I also usually post in the forum, uh, headphones forum, in the link below, forum to headphones in the YouTube reviewers section. I usually post uh, at least 30 minutes before going live, so that's, that's also an option. And uh, yeah, hoping to stay sane <laughs> in, in December and all the fun stuff. Hopefully this year can can end on a good note and we can we can move 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 forward with some some good news about the covid stuff and hopefully be able to start traveling again and all that fun stuff in the near future but fingers crossed and all that, all that jazz and uh yeah thanks everyone for joining and i really appreciate it and um oh we'll have the headphone show i'll be on that tom hopefully tomorrow but we're kind of in the air it might be tomorrow um but we might push it out to this weekend so keep an eye out for that and with that i will say have a great rest of your day. Cheers, everybody. And...